Minnesota teams here, okay. uh, which leads into the local area, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, a lot of the newer arrivals are in this area, uh, as well as bobbleheads that we've produced. So I mentioned we produce bobbleheads. Uh, a lot of them are for retail sales. Um, you know, we did a line of bobblehead ornaments. We've done a lot with the champions. So you know, North Carolina basketball with their mm -hmm. six trophies, or North Dakota State with their you know six trophies, now getting a seventh. Yeah. Um, the draft day bobbleheads are a lot of fun, like Giannis uh, commemorating the draft. A new line will come out, you know, for the football season. Uh, with the recent drafts. We're doing uh, the Negro League series of bobbleheads commemorating oh, cool. the Negro Leagues. We actually have a special exhibit planned uh, for the second half of next year, which will uh, center around the Negro Leagues and the history of the leagues and the stories behind the players, so we're excited about that. Nice. Um, yeah, others that we produce, some of the more you know, rare ones, autographed ones, uh, are in here. So, you know, you have everybody from Front, <laughs> front Row, row Amy. Amy to the cast of the Today Show, which we've created for them when we were on the show. Uh, some of the harder to find ones, like the original Sister Jean, um, you know, the rivalries. Another favorite is sausage. those two with all five of the sausages and all five of the oh, racing yeah. presidents on one base. Um, we're always trying to come up with some new ideas. Some of these are ones we've produced. Some of them are just ones that, you know, uh, we've acquired. Um, you know, the Watt Brothers in their Wisconsin jerseys is another really cool one uh, yeah. that we came out with. We did a series of rivalry bobbleheads as well. Um, featuring the best, you know, baseball rivalries. Um, over here, more new arrivals. Okay. Uh, the original... Sports bobbleheads uh, from the 1960 um, are in this area here. So 1960, 61, the first ones had the square bases there. So those are the very first football uh, and very first baseball bobbleheads. Uh, this is a five pound cast iron mold that they used to produce the very first bobbleheads. Hmm. So that's probably one of the more, most rare items, one of a kind thing that you're not gonna see anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, the mini ones used to be available for like a quarter um, where you could mail in for a dollar. Uh, and now the set, just a couple months ago, full set of baseball ones sold for about uh, $6,000. So, yeah, quite a big appreciation. Then bobbleheads, I know you're more focused on sports, but, uh -huh. you know, we have all different genres. So even the non-sports fan will find something that they like. So. Right. There's so much uniqueness in, yes. it, in all of this. Yeah, some of the original college ones, like the early Wisconsin Badgers, okay. the Baylor Bears. Yeah. Um, yeah, really everything uh, that's been turned into bobbleheads. Wow. Uh, another one of our favorite areas is the Wall of Champions. So each year, uh, the championship team gets bobbleheads created in their likeness. And mm -hmm. So, you know, these are the most recent champions. The Eagles will be going away probably next week and getting replaced with the Patriots, which are just yeah. coming in now. Um, so so you, do you make these as well then? Uh, so these are made by a company called FOCO, which is out of New Jersey. And they okay. have all the licenses for the professional leagues. But we've become one of their biggest bobblehead customers, so we're sort of the go-to source now for a lot of these bobbleheads for collectors when right. you know, the Patriots win or hopefully when the Bucks win. They'll yep. come to yeah, no, bobbleheads. order those Bucks right now. Yes. I mean. Yep. So yeah, <laughs> love to get rid of the Warriors and add some Bucks bobbleheads. Yeah. Who knows, the Brewers... Uh, could eventually could eventually replace and end up on that shelf it could be a, just the wisconsin wall eventually yeah i, I guess mean. we maybe the blackhawks so like <laughs> chicago wisconsin because we don't have the nfl yet but, uh the hall of fame wall will be on this area here um right now pete rose is the only bobblehead inducted into the bobblehead hall of fame we did a uh online poll oh uh, a couple years several years ago when we first came up with the idea to see if people wanted his Bobblehead to be the first one inducted, and it was like 95% said his bobblehead deserves to so be the first one. So he's in one. So he's in one, yeah. So we got that. We have a lot of the three foot bobbleheads, which are always a, a fun favorite uh, thing for you know, adults and kids to see. But <laughs> yeah, three foot bango, I didn't man. expect this to move here. Yes. So, so it's yep, one big bobblehead. <laughs> yep, so the six foot plus bobblehead is a you know, giant version of our founding member bobblehead. So, oh, wow. Basically, just take a 3D scan of this one and mm -hmm. it blew it up and uh, had it produced. Yeah. So, yeah. Neat. Uh, and then one of the other favorite categories is the mascots. Uh, there are just you know so many different fun mascots out there in uh, sports and non-sports. I mean, you have uh, you know, 
college, baseball, basketball, football yeah. uh, represented here. There are more mascots sprinkled throughout the collection, but uh, they have their own little special section here. Um, all the Wisconsin bobbleheads are featured in this section, which is where we have a welcome video that people can watch uh, that gives them a you know, brief two-minute overview of the museum and how it got started. Uh, but yeah, this section has everything, Brewers, Badgers, Bucks, uh, Mallards, all the colleges, the Waves, the Admirals. Uh, so a really cool area because you're not going to find uh, this many Wisconsin bobbleheads really anywhere else in really? this a Yeah. Diehard Wisconsin fan who has it in his, uh, fan, his or her fan cave or main cave. Uh, there's also some bobblehead news and uh, a map where people can put a pin where they came from. Oh, wow. Uh, so that's sort of fun. We have some visitors from Sweden earlier today. There's an international map behind there. Um, oh, where okay. International oh. visitors can put their pin <laughs> uh, U.S. map is starting to get built, especially in the Midwest, but uh, there's still, I think, a couple of states left. We need some visitors from Montana or uh, Idaho, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you spread the word out there. Yeah. Um, this is the pop culture section, so all the non-sports bobbleheads. I don't know if you want to see these two or... Uh, ah, anything. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, everything from... Well, there's some baseball over here, too, with the new partnership with Game of Thrones. Uh, those have been some of the most popular bobbleheads uh, oh, yeah, this sure year. Enough. So all the mascots on the throne, uh, and the Night King and the Ice Dragon, uh, for the Game of Thrones fans have been really popular. You know, Bernie Brewer on the throne. Um, wow. So yeah, really every sing every mascot. So it's sort of a cool. Uh, yeah, this is cool nice. Feature. Uh, we have an area with some kids' activities for the kids out there. Stop by and visit. Uh, the Bobblehead Song, which is written by Milwaukee, or by Cap Pat McCurdy, uh, is definitely something that all visitors uh, have to check out and sing along to. Bobblehead, Bobblehead, Bob, Bob, Bobblehead, 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 I was not aware there was a song. Bobblehead, 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 there's the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> so... Then do you have special exhibits like the Game of Thrones rotate through sometimes? Yeah, so yeah, we're going to have uh, quite a few. So the, special, the Game of Thrones will probably stay there. We might pare it down a little bit so that you know we don't have every night thing. We just have a couple. Um, but we'll put other special exhibits in these areas or okay. in the front. Uh, you know, when the Democratic National Convention comes to Milwaukee in 2020, we'll do a political oh, okay. exhibit. Cool. Uh, so yeah. And then we have... Uh, Several featured Wisconsinites here along the ledges. So everybody from like Vince Lombardi to Harry Houdini, uh, mm -hmm. just giving a little more information about the people making it a learning experience. Where you know, hopefully somebody comes and you know wants yeah. to learn more about Vince Lombardi or right Aaron. more of the Wisconsin culture. Yeah, and then that transitions into some of the heroes, uh, stars. People like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Helen Keller, okay. uh, Jackie Robinson, uh, Superman, other people like that. And then uh, the rest of the non-sports bobbleheads are in this area, the political, which will be expanded uh, you know, significantly for the convention. Uh, then you have everything from wrestling to boxing to lacrosse, golf, uh, nice section of Tiger Woods. <laughs> Golf, uh, aka yes. Tiger Woods. Yeah. Uh, there's some underneath him too. Oh, yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you have all the hockey, uh, oh, a lot wow. of the hockey mascots as well. Uh, for every team is represented. When we get back up to the front, there's a wall that has one bobblehead for every team uh, for MLB, NFL, NBA, mm. and NHL, which is uh, pretty cool to look at. Yeah. Uh, Al the octopus with his babble tentacles is <laughs> definitely a, a fan favorite. Uh, yeah. This is impressive. We can keep going this way. All right. People can learn more about how bobbleheads are made and the process behind it. Yeah. This is, I mean, I guess I always think spring and stuff is there a certain yeah. type of spring that that uh, works there's some different kinds but yeah and i think that's uh 
right here, the anatomy of the Babylon. One of the things that's kept them so popular is the fact that you know they're they've remained so much the same over time. Yeah, they're still just a body, a spring in the head, and um, you know people enjoy them. Just uh, they're fun to have around. So um, yeah, who doesn't like a Babylon? Right. Uh, yeah, and a lot of college, you know, people love their colleges. So quite a few college bobbleheads in mm-hmm. this area. Um, and then you know, your NFL, NBA uh, sections. So. so now when on those wall of champions you were saying, do they come out into this area or? So yeah, the previous champions there... will be in this area. So like, uh, you know, the original 2015 okay. Steph Curry Warriors, yep. Andrew Bogut, uh, you know, the Cavaliers with their championship trophies, uh, the Lakers with trophies, uh, Detroit Pistons, I forgot they won it. <laughs> Bucks just killed them. So. Yeah, that's probably the last time they won a playoff uh, game. Takimba Matumbo with his uh, Bible figure. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you always see new ones. You will get people who are, you know, oh, you don't have any of this. And you, you know, like, oh, yeah, there's a whole section of them. So, yeah, we do help people find the Bible heads that they. Uh, you know, are looking for one that they couldn't find out. You know, we usually have it somewhere. Yeah. Um, so, so is there even a stash that you have back there that you can't fit back here? Or is everything you get uh, no. in this so, area? So yeah, we have about sixty five hundred here, uh, in the museum on display at any given time, and then we have about ten thousand total. So there's still about thirty five hundred that are not on display. Uh, we tell people like, you know, we don't need twenty five Barry Bonds bobbleheads out. You know, right. bobble is fine. <laughs> uh, there's some that we do want to get out. You know, and we'll mm-hmm. find spots to put them. You know, maybe take off some Cavaliers and add some, you know, some others. But yeah. Uh, so come in this way, gets into the baseball bobbleheads. These panels talk more about, you know, different things like this is related to the donors and people who have contributed bobbleheads to the museum. Um, but yeah, baseball. So organized by team for the most part. Um, you know, every team is represented. Almost, you know, pretty much every minor league team is represented as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are some of the. You know, they're doing a lot of creative bobbleheads. Some really unique. Uh, you know, bobbleheads from you know Salvador Perez Splash. Oh and, yeah, the Selvi Splash. Uh, some really unique ones. So then, do you still go to the Brewer games and get the bobbleheads yourself sometimes when you can? Uh, we, uh, you know, we're big baseball fans, so mm-hmm. you know we still go to games. Uh, not to the extent that we had to go, you know, and get each one as we did in the past. You know, we line up early and so forth. We don't necessarily have to do that as much, uh, but yeah, it's still fun, still good to see, you know, and interact with people. And uh, you know, it's part of the fun of it is you know getting those bobbleheads at the game. Yeah. This panel talks about the first bobblehead giveaway, uh, which was by the San Francisco Giants in May of 1999. Uh, wow. That was really what reignited the bobblehead craze. Yeah, say that recent. It seems like there would have been yeah, ones Yeah, so we earlier. looked at some of the ones from the 60s, but those were ones that you'd have to buy at the stadium. Okay. So, would, you know, so the giveaways the, first started. The first the giveaways, and that's really when they, wow. yeah, they, you know, the resurgence occurred. Mm-hmm. Uh, And then the rest of the baseball, another favorite section is the super fans and sort of the non-players. Uh, <laughs> so everybody from, you know, some of the organists at the games. Yeah. Ron Nelson that the team gave away. Uh, the guy who does the drumming at the Cleveland Indians games. He sits oh, in like, yeah. the last row of the bleachers and uh, beats his drum. He did it at uh, Miller Park for when the Indians played at uh, Miller Park during a... Uh, game that was moved to the weather there. That's right. I think uh, I may have been at that game. Yeah. yeah. So he was the only one they let out in the outfield because they only had like the infield per close but per open. But yeah. The Hogettes were the Washington Redskins uh, super fans and they did uh, they'd go to all the games, they'd get patches and stuff. They did a lot of community work and they had their own bobbleheads. Uh, actually really hard to find a lot of people looking for some of those. Uh, the announcers are another fun section you know we have uh, everybody from bob oh, yeah. which bob Uker has several in the milwaukee area too I'm sure but, um yeah a lot of the famous announcers from ben scully to you know some of the the others yeah um, 
the first bobblehead that we produced was a Michael Pohl, who's a oh. manager for UWM. Yep. So that was one of the inspirations of the museum, um, and one of the you know things that got this started and uh, cool. And so forth. Very nice. Um, so as we go back over here, it leads you into the store, so that anything in the store is available. Uh, to purchase, a lot of people will leave with the bobblehead or two. Oh, I'm sure. Um, or a t-shirt <laughs> or merchandise, so it's uh, definitely an area to check out. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of the bobbleheads that are in the store are uh, featured here, you know, in the windows so people can see it, so you know, pounce the paint through. Oh, yeah. Um, I can touch, but yeah, we ask people not to touch. Good thing to remember. Uh, and this is the wall, A to Z, uh, every bobblehead. Uh, one bobblehead for every team. Okay. For baseball, basketball, football, and hockey. So. Nice. Uh, yeah, cool. Oh, cool. A little way to see that. And then we have a welcome area and some bobblehead art and some of the other newer arrivals. So it gives people uh, yeah, a lot to see and, yeah. and do. Well, cool. Thanks for showing us around. and. Um, I'm sure if anyone wants to contact you, you're on Facebook or a website. Yep. Yeah, they can go to our website, bobbleheadhall.com. Uh, we're Bobblehead Hall everywhere, so Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you can send us a message through there, through email. Uh, we're here, yeah. right downtown uh, area, and open seven days a week now, uh, 10 to 6, Monday through Friday, and 10 to 5 on the weekends. Nice. Well, get down here and see it. I mean, we gave you an overview. You got to see more of it. It's a cool place. I recommend it. And, uh, yeah, thank you, Phil. Yeah, thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, hope to see you down here.